Dental Biofilm, Dysbiosis and Disease In 1683, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek wrote I did not clean my mouth on purpose for three days and then took the matter that, in a small quantity, had stuck to the gum above my front teeth. This I mixed both with spittle and with clean water and discovered a few living animalcules in it. This was the first observation of bacteria, but it wasn't until 1890 that bacteria were implicated in dental diseases. Let's take a look around the mouth. No matter what you do, there will still be plenty of bacteria in the mouth, and that's fine. In fact, you can't and shouldn't have a bacteria-free oral cavity. Good oral health is about controlling the bacteria that are present in dental plaque. What is dental plaque? Dental plaque is one type of biofilm. These sticky communities of bacteria can be found almost anywhere in nature, where liquid meets a solid surface. When bacteria colonize in a biofilm, it makes them far more resistant to the external environment. About 700 different species are found in the human oral microbiome, and within any given person, there are 200 to 300 species present. The quantity of bacteria found in a person's mouth can be in the billions, which, if lined up end to end, would span more than a mile. Once tooth enamel is cleaned, salivary glycoproteins quickly deposit on the tooth surface, allowing pioneer species of fast-growing bacteria in the saliva to bind, recolonize, and quickly begin reforming the biofilm. Then, other species attach and continue developing a thicker biofilm. The bacteria multiply, producing polymers, and even communicate with each other, resulting in a complex, three-dimensional biofilm. The early colonizers are beneficial, good bacteria. However, they can create an environment for slower-growing, pathogenic, bad bacteria to start to thrive. Inadequate oral hygiene allows for a thicker, more mature and complex pathogenic biofilm to develop, which can lead to an imbalance between the good and bad bacteria in the oral microbiome, a term called dysbiosis. Here, pathogenic bacteria release toxins and enzymes that trigger an inflammatory response in the gingival tissues. This inflammation marks the beginning of gingivitis. Dysbiosis can also occur with a different spectrum of bacteria known to cause dental caries. According to the World Health Organization, most children have gingivitis, as do a large majority of adults. If untreated, gingivitis can progress to periodontitis. Severe periodontitis is the sixth most prevalent medical condition worldwide. In most countries, dental caries affect 60 to 90% of schoolchildren. If you turn around, you will see the posterior of the mouth. Many of the bad bacteria also cause oral malodor by colonizing the difficult to reach posterior third of the tongue, which is the primary source of oral malodor. Turning back toward the front of the mouth, let's examine the effects of evidence-based daily oral hygiene. Brushing removes plaque on the tooth surface. Cleaning between the teeth further removes plaque missed by brushing. Rinsing as directed with an effective mouthwash can target hard to reach areas of the mouth. This daily routine will help maintain a healthy oral biofilm and help prevent dysbiosis and disease. Make sure to use safe and effective products that have received endorsements from leading dental associations.